Okay, welcome to Pod Nuts Daily for July 9th, 2008. It's a major stormy day here in um, right outside of Philadelphia. So if you guys hear l- thunder or if my signal cuts out because the lightning is getting pretty bad, I might lose a signal today. Um, I'll just see you tomorrow, but hopefully the power will stay on and we can do the show. Um, no hat today, guys, just if you're noticing, those who are watching. Um, my hair's starting to look a little better than it did before, so I could take the hat off a couple days a week. Even though I like wearing a hat, um, you got to switch it up a little bit, I think. Okay, let me just get into some business here. Today was one of those... I'm going to talk a little bit about the computer business a little bit in the beginning here. Today was one of those days where um, both me and my dad, we worked our butts off all day and either got just a little actual finished, completed jobs or none. In my case, I didn't get... I did get one, but almost no jobs completed. You're going to have those days if you're a computer tech where you feel like you are just busting your butt and working to the bone and nothing gets finally done. Um, You just got to work through those days. I mean, it's the best advice I could give you because the work you're doing during those days has to get done at some point. So eventually you'll get it done. And when you have those days, there's also the opposite end of where, of the spectrum where there, you're going to have days where you get like 20 things done. So it all kind of balances out. Uh, so just work through those days. Don't get too frustrated, and then uh, it'll it'll pay off. Um, in my case, when I start to get a little stressed out on the job, or get a little, I feel like I'm splattered all over the office or dispersed. I just sit down and I work on one computer till it's done. And it might not be the most productive thing to do, but at least you could settle down and just ease your mind a little bit and just focus on one and get it done. And then pick out the next one and then get that one done. If you're trying to do 10 things at once, you might not get any of them done. Whereas if you're trying to do one thing at a time, you might get one or two things done. But what you need to get are dones. That's what counts. That's what pays. And that's what you need to go for. So lately especially, I'll just sit down with one thing in front of me, get it done, go to the next thing, get it done, get to the next thing, get it done. Had a computer today. Um, the customer had a working system. And then somebody, for security's sake, told him he needs to partition his hard drive into another partition and run the operating system off the other partition. Well, the, the person went ahead and set that up for him and did that. Um, now, the partition the guy set up, this new partition with the operating system on it now, is like it was only four gigs. And, of course, Windows likes to default save everything to um, that particular partition that it's on or the My Documents folder, which is on that partition, and it just filled up really fast. So I went ahead and I tried to re um, to mix the two partitions, merge the two partitions together into one. I looked online because I, I thought I had Partition Magic 8, which is one of my tools I use for this. I left it at home. I didn't have it at the office. So I, I, f- I took, on, took it upon myself to, as an opportunity to, to find maybe a nice free um, partitioning program. And I did find one. If you type fr- free partition program, the first one that comes up is called Partition Logic. My God. Did you guys hear that? Tell me if you heard that. S- yeah, it scared the hell out of me. <laughs> oh, guys. If, I mean, the power is either going to go out or I'm going to go up in a fl- burst of flame. So either one. But I'm going to keep doing the show. Um,. What was I saying? The parti- so I found Partition Logic online, and I, I burned that to a. Uh, it's a. It's a. Looks like a great program. Comes. Um, you just download it as an ISO, and then you you burn the ISO to a CD. Well, uh, I burned it to a CD, put it in his machine, and it's a bootable CD. It runs its own operating system. I don't even know what it's called. I don't even think it's Linux. It's a strange system. Um, when I booted it up into the CD, the, the, I got an error message saying it could not work with the partitions on this drive because the geometry, the hard disk geometry from one partition is different than the others and that I shouldn't mess with anything. Um, that's the first time I've ever seen that, but um, it gave me some pretty specific reasons why that is. And um, if you ever get that error, well, well, here's what I did, actually. So even so, I said, all right, well, this program, I thought the program just wasn't working. So I went and went home, got Partition Magic, loaded up Partition Magic, and I got the same error. Partition Magic said, look, you can't work on this hard drive because the geometry of the two, the two partitions is different, and um, you will risk losing data. And it gave me that warning. Then it wouldn't even let me touch the hard drive. So it must be a pretty severe error. Um, I'm going to look into more what exactly that is, but I, I don't know right now, so I probably sound like a dummy to some people. But... Um, that could happen, I guess, when you're trying to merge partitions. 
Well, anyway, I took a closer look at his drive, and he actually has operating systems on both partitions. So what I did is I went into not the partition that's defaulting to load now, which is the one that's all filled. I went to the other one, and I wanted to get that partition to load because he's got like 50 gigs free space on that side. Well, how I did that was I went into um, the original starting partition, it looked at the boot.ini file. Now, the boot.ini file was defaulted to to boot from partition 2. And all I did was change the two, the two in that in the uh, entry there to 1, so it's booting from partition 1. I did that. The thing booted up fine to the open partition. Um, now, with this new open partition, I have a tons of free space to work with, so I just went ahead in the disk manager. I deleted his other partition, the 4-gig one. But first, I bat- moved all of his data onto the new partition, killed the old partition. Now I'm going to merge it, and everything should be fine. But... Uh, we've been working a lot with boot INI files in the last couple jobs we've been doing. It's powerful. It really um, really determines what your computer is going to do at startup. So um, check out the boot INI file. You could, you could really set it to do certain things. You could rename your operating system, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's some, definitely something to check out, especially if you're dealing with the partitions and you want to boot to one or the other and you want to switch them manually. Uh, we installed, a, we fixed up an HP laptop today. It was just running real slow. The girl um, had actually came in and wanted it to be wireless, so she brought us a wireless card that she had just bought from Staples for like $80. It's, um, it was a PCMCIA slot card, uh, Netgear, wireless, and with, uh, I think, speed something, or I don't know, an extra feature. Um, and here's what I love to do when I install wireless cards, even on desktops. I like to... No matter what the disk says, no matter what it says in the box about please run the wizard first, I like to take the card and hook it up to the computer before I put the disk in. The computer will recognize something's hooked up and say, all right, where's the drivers for this thing? Then I put the disk in and I point it to the drivers and or I point the point windows to the disk. It finds the drivers and just pulls out the drivers for that file. Then I w- we use the Windows Zero configuration utility to run it. Um, if you don't do it that way... That company's software is going to be installed on the computer. Like, say, if you bought a Belkin wireless card, it installs the Belkin wireless utility and all the other crap that it wants to put on there. If you don't want all that junk on there and you just want the drivers, do it the way I said, and then you'll you'll save yourself from from you know installing some unnecessary junk. Because I I always have problems with because every company has their own wireless configuration utility. So. You bought a Netgear card, you have the Netgear wireless utility, and Belkin, a Belkin utility, and they all sometimes don't play well together. If you use the the Windows Zero configuration utility, at least it's all consistent throughout the thing. I've heard some pretty bad things about security on Windows Zero 